Hello, uh, welcome to Video Analytics 101. Today we're talking about re-identification, what you can do with it, and how it works. So re-identification, or short re-ID, is becoming popular recently. Why? Because it solves a number of problems we have in computer vision for a long, long time. Essentially, you can divide it into two sets of problems. The first one being object tracking. Well, object tracking in general is the process of following an object through a scene. And traditionally, we do this by looking, when we detect different objects from frame to frame, we look how far are they, how far did they move. If they're very close to each other, it likely it's the same object. But it has a big problem, like if people walk, uh, walk by, they cross this object, there are occlusions, there's a wall or a column or so becomes very difficult with this approach. So re-identification can help there because no matter how long an object is covered, you can always re-identify it by, by finding it again, by really identifying um, that it's the same object. The second big set of problems is multi-camera tracking, where you want to re-identify, uh, for example, a person across many different cameras. And that's a much more difficult problem because camera views are different, lighting is different, everything looks different. So this is not so easy as applying re-identification to object tracking, but it's a really a field that's up and coming. So how does it work? Well, essentially for re-identification, you calculate an ID per person. This is called a feature vector. That's essentially the same thing as you do for facial recognition. So you detect an object and you calculate an ID. It's a feature vector in the database. There are specific databases for this um, to make search very fast. And when you identify a person next time, you basically calculate how different is this vector, how far is it away, what's the distance, it's a technical term. And if it's close enough, you basically say, okay, that's the same person. So sounds pretty easy, like facial recognition. But it's not so easy because there's something different to facial recognition. Facial recognition is a biometric technology, but re-ID is not. Why? Because re-ID really depends on the whole appearance of a person. And if you look at it in detail, it turns out that most of your appearance is really the clothes you're wearing and the colors you're wearing. So it really depends on the colors that you're wearing, meaning that if you change your color, your clothes next day, for example, RIA-D won't be able to find you. And this is the reason why it's not biometrics like facial recognition. But it also means that it's more challenging because if across cameras, lighting is different, um, uh, camera angles are different, it's very hard to identify. And the second problem is really color. If you look at research papers, what they typically show you is um, people with very colorful t-shirts being re-identified over, over cameras and it works very well. And it's very fine if you have real world problems like uh, maybe a general square or railway station where people look very different, um, maybe even in summer where it's very colorful. That's where it works. But if you apply it to a general environment, for example, an office environment, it turns out that people dress very similarly, actually, especially the colors. In an office where people wear, um, wear office attire, business attire, it's very hard. All, all of them are black and white and very similar. And it turns out that it's becoming less and less accurate there because this really, really um, goes for the color of people that people are wearing. So what, what can you do about it? Well, it turns out that while re-identification is not 100% accurate, it's not super accurate, you can make it more accurate by adding context information. So for example, what you can do is, based on the re-identification information, what comes out of it, like the similarity between people, you can apply an additional model on top of it that does it provides more context information. For example, on which cameras did this uh, person appear last time? Is it even possible that this person moves from this camera to this camera in the time between, or is it too far away? Um, where did they leave the camera? Did they go out on the left side or the right side? Did they appear on the other camera there? And if you add all this context information, it turns out that you can make this thing much more accurate and to make it actually usable. For example, for a forensic search application where you want to find the same person across cameras. Now, this is re-identification. You will hear about this much more in the future, I'm sure, because as uh, technology is maturing, you will see pop applications pop up everywhere. I hope you liked this episode. Please subscribe to the channel if you did, and otherwise, see you next time.